Hi everyone and welcome to the channel if you are new and if you're a faithful subscriber, welcome home. So you guys, first let me start by giving you a disclaimer. My allergies are off the chain. <laughs> um, so if I'm sniffling, I sniffled a lot in the last video, but my allergies, it's just been really bad. But anyway, see there we go. Anyway, welcome to the channel. I wanted to come on today and just thought it would be fun to do some fall um, DIY projects with you. So I have a couple of projects in store. I want to um, share with you how to make a um, pumpkin, the sweater pumpkin. You can use whatever material you want. Sweater pumpkins, you can do the, the fuzzy material, you can do the material that looks kind of like boucle fur, whatever, whatever you choose. It's up to you. But I wanted to do a fun um, decor pumpkin for your couch or bed or whatever, pillow um, type pumpkin. So I wanted to do that. Um, I want to, one of the things that's been on my bucket list for this fall is to do a homemade candle. So I ordered, I'll show you. I ordered um, a candle making kit from Amazon and I'm going to give it a try. I had gotten some candle wicks from a thrift um, store months ago and that was kind of like when it was planning I'm like oh I want to make my own candles but I never got to it um, but now that it's fall I want to do that but to do that I want to go and find a vessel for my candle and so I'm gonna go thrifting you guys have not been thrifting in a long time it's been a while since I've been so I want to go thrifting and I want to look for a vessel and I want to try to behave myself and be good and only get the vessel but we'll see when we get there um, so I wanted to do that and then I also did a um, pumpkin just like um, charcoal kind of sketch um, with the faux frame I, inspired by one that they had out at Home Goods for this fall and so decided to DIY my own so I want to share that with you um, as well and I think Oh, and then I have the sweetest, cutest little pottery piece that I found when I was out antiquing and thrifting one day. And I love the shape of it. I love the look of it. I shared it uh, with you in one of my hauls. But I love the look of it, but I'm not in love with the color of it. So I'll show you that when we get to it too. So just that, that's just going to be a simple, easy easy breezy one um, but I want to make that over so I'll share that with you um, today as well so anyway should be a fun video before I get into any of the DIY projects I want to show you the cutest bird feeder that I got I have bird feeders out back you guys know that and bird house in this past um, spring a bird did um, make it make its nest in one of them and laid eggs but um, I wanted this bird feeder because it is a clear window bird feeder and you guys know Louie he like he's outside the door now trying to get in here he'll probably be in in a minute but I got it for Louie um, just because he loves what cat doesn't he loves to sit in the window but I thought it'd be really um, cute um, for him to be able to see the birds because the bird feeder allows it's clear and it you attach it to your window so when the birds come up it's kind of like inside outside kind of deal so I want to show you that so before we get ready to leave to go to the thrift store and get into our DIY project let me show you the bird feeder and this video is not sponsored but the company did gift me this bird feeder and actually here's the box it is the window bird feeder and this is by i think the company name is emer emer tay or something i don't know i'm butchering that up um but i will put all the information here here's the actual video for me here's the company Irmet. I don't know how to pronounce that, but I do know this bird feeder is amazing. I really, really, really like it. And what I love about the bird feeder is that um, you get this nice note from them. And then you get, of course, the instructions, step-by-step -step instructions. There's only four steps to doing it, you guys, to how to put the bird feeder together. And then another thing that you get is you get these stickers to go on the bird feeder um, if you wanted to use these stickers. Now, I did not, and you get all of the hardware. You even get this cute little, every all the things that you need for it. But I didn't use the stickers because I just 
like the fact that it's clear when I from the outside looking in you don't see it um, and then from the inside looking out you don't see you know all the butterflies and it just kind of continues to flow with my decor and it does it all the colorful but I love these who's to say if I if I move it I may, I may use it so anyway let me let you get a look at the bird feeder so guys you will love this bird feeder because it's easy to clean it's easy to assemble it has a large capacity it's easy to install and you guys most of all it's rainproof, so you don't have to worry about the food getting wet from just a light rain. It also has a large field of view so that you can see the birds. Now, here I am just putting it together, guys. This is easy peasy simple to do. Now that I have it all assembled, I'm now going to fill it with bird feeder and the rest will be just magic watching all the birds come to feed from this clear bird feeder. And as you guys can see, I'm not the only one anticipating seeing the birds. Are you gonna watch the birds? And if you're interested in this bird feeder, I'll have the link for you in the description box. Now guys, let's go thrifting so I can find a vessel for my fall candle that I wanna make for you. Hi guys, so I'm back. Wasn't gone that long. Um, the flea market didn't have a lot of stuff and I only went to that one and I didn't videotape a lot. Um, that's Louie you hear in the background playing in a plastic bag. Um, but I didn't, um, they didn't have a whole lot and I didn't videotape a lot just because there was just a lot of activity in there today and I, I don't really know if I was in the mood. <laughs> But, you guys, I looked around and looked around to get some scissors and um, found a couple of vessels. But right before I left, it's like the heavens opened up because I found the absolute perfect vessel for my candle, you guys. You have got to see this. I'm trying to take the top, the um, tape off of it. This has fall leaves on it gorgeous 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 and it has a top that comes off of it you guys even look at the the lid the leaf but look at the handle to it it is a little acorn it's an acorn like i couldn't have found a better and i paid two dollars for this and um on the bottom of it i can see that it used to be a hallmark a hallmark vessel so this is going to be perfect for my candle so and I did really good because I only bought this that's the only thing I only thing I got and I paid two dollars for it but like I said this is perfect it couldn't be it's got little acorns in here you can I'll, you'll get a better shot but anyway that's all I got from the thrift store so 
I have all of my stuff laid out that I want to do for um, the other DIY projects. And so without further ado, let's get into our DIYs. Okay guys, so the first project that I wanna do is I just wanna do a simple makeover on this um, little um, vase here. I found this at um, a thrift store um, when I was out one day. I only paid $2 for it and I love the look of it. Um, it's very heavy and sturdy. Um, I love that it has some imperfections. I love that it has this little chip here in it, um, but I'm not in love with the color. Um, and so I want to change this just to match my decor. I love the cream in it, but the purple doesn't match my decor. So I just kind of want to paint over that in some kind of way and just give this a makeover. So I have everything that I need for this. I just have some bowls for my paint. I have several different color paints because usually, to be honest, guys, I usually just go in when I'm doing a project and start painting and I just keep blending and painting until I find um, the look that I'm looking for. And I think this is the color scheme that I'm going for, but I just need to find the overall look. And then of course you guys all know the old baking soda um, trick where you add baking soda to your paint just to give it more of that chalk um, finish. So I'm gonna do that. I do have some of these um, synthetic sponges that I'll use in case I need to blot it to give it a little bit more character. And then I have some brushes. So without a lot of talking, let's get into this project. So guys, I'm just gonna start with a darker brown on the bottom and I'll just add some baking soda to that just to kind of make it a little bit more chalky and then I'll get my sponge. I already got paint on my hand. So I'll get my sponge and mix this up. Just mixing it up to make it a little chalky. Then I'm going to just go in and start painting and I'll let you watch as I'm doing that. Okay, so this is what it's looking like with just that first coat of paint, just trying to get the paint on there. So went in with that first coat, gonna let that dry just a little bit, and then we'll come back with um, the next layer, or whatever I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna keep playing with it until it looks the way I want it to look. Okay guys, so now I'm gonna go in, I have my black and I'm gonna go in before this dries completely so I can kind of get the colors to mix with each other, so to speak. So we'll, we'll start that. And now I'm gonna go in with this lighter color and do the same, the exact same thing. You wanna mix and blend. And then after that, I'm going to let it sit for a little bit and then I'll start rubbing away. Um, any excess, so keep watching guys. So guys, now that I have it painted while it's still wet, I'm gonna take one of these little sponges and just blot it just to give it more um, texture to make it look more um, like a piece of pottery. So just gonna go around real lightly because I don't wanna take off any of the paint that I've already done, but I'm just gonna go around it really lightly just to kind of give it some texture. So that's all I'm doing is just going over it to just give it some 
texture. <laughs> and so guys, as I'm doing this, um, in the different spots, depending on how um, saturated the color was going on, it's pulling those colors from the bottom layers to the top layers and really giving it an antique um, look. So, and this is exactly what I wanted. I like wanted it to look worn and antique-ish and more like a piece of pottery. So that's what it's doing. And the colors, all of the different colors, the lighter color that we started with, and then the three paint colors, they're all peeping through and really giving this some dimension and a lot of texture. So um, I'm really pleased with it so far and not gonna overwork it because I don't wanna, it's like when you get a piece where you like it, you wanna, as much as you wanna keep messing with it, you wanna leave it alone because you don't wanna undo what you've already done. So this is the um, inspiration that I was going for for this piece. And then I'll show you um, the inspiration pieces for the other vases that I have in my home that I kind of wanted to play off of those. And I think I've achieved it. So now that that's done, we'll let it dry and we're gonna move on to the next project. And then I'll come back and style this when it when it's all done. And guys, this is the inspiration for the look that I was going for. I picked this up while I was thrifting one day and I only paid $20 for this. You guys have seen this in a previous haul. But anyway, this is the look I was going for and I think I did pretty good. Oh my gosh it's perfect these leaves every time i look at it i'm just like i couldn't have found a better that little acorn on the top but i ordered this natural soy candle wax um candle making kit from amazon and i will link it in the description box for you everything you need to make your candle is inside so we're gonna head to the kitchen and i'm gonna show you what's inside of the kit and then we're going to make our um, fall inspired candle Okay, so everything we need is inside the kit. You guys, hold on and let me fix the lighting. So inside the kit, we have our um, directions for what to do. And then we have these little stickies. This is so you can stick the wick down in your vessel and it'll stay where you put it after you do it. Um, we have these little popsicle stickers with a hole in it. That's so you can put it down over your wick and over your vessel to hold it in place. And then, of course, we have this little spoon. Not sure what that's for yet. I need to read the directions. I mean, of course, it's for stirring the wax. But. And then, of course, you have your, um, your candle wicks. You have a, a bag of candle wicks. And then you have this oh, huge bag of soy wax. I'm going to be able to make several candles. And I'm so excited about it more popsicle sticks here in the bottom and then this is really what you need you could do like a double boiler to do it but if you get this it just kind of helps so that you don't dirty something up and then have to clean it out because you're only using this for your wax and um, it has the little measurement increments on the inside um, but yeah, so that's everything that comes in your kit. So now let's make our candle. Okay, so I have everything here to get started. I'm going to use my cast iron skillet. You can use an electric plate. That's what it says to use. But if you don't have it, then you can do like the double broiler um, type thing. So I'm going to put some water in my cast iron skillet. And then, I, of course, I have my... Um, metal container for my wax and I also have my wax here in a cup but before I do that I'm going to prep my container um, with my wick and everything so let me back you guys up a bit so you can see here let me just 
Let me see. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Green beans for dinner. <laughs> All right, so take this and stick it on to here and then peel this back and then place my wick in the center here where I want my candle to be. And then I'm going to take this and put down over it so that my wick stays up nice and neat. So I've added my wax and I'm just letting this boil down until the temperature is where it needs to be for my essential oils. Okay, so now that the wax is melted, you just want to check the temperature and when it's 125 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, then you can go in and add your essential oils. And the oil that I have is white pumpkin and it smells so, so good. And it smells just like pumpkin bread or, so I'm gonna add my essential oil and then after you add your essential oil, then it's, you pour it into your vessel. So let me add my oil and then pour the candle. So guys, I actually had enough wax to do three candles and I found two cute little um, espresso cups that I was able to use. So the candles are poured and it smells so good. And so now I'm just waiting for them to um, set and then I will clip the wicks and we'll have ourselves some um, Homemade soy candles, you guys. Okay, guys, so the candles are all set. They look and smell so good. So now I just remove the um, popsicle sticks and trim the wicks, and then they'll be all done. Okay, for my next project, we're going to do the pumpkin, and I got this fabric. It's kind of like a boucle type fabric, and I just have it cut in a square, and you want to cut it in a square and leave one side intact. The other sides are, are not um, and done. And then I'm going to, oh, this fabric is just so nice, and it's pretty on either side, you do. So... I'm going to put the like sides together. I think they're already together. So the like sides are together and you can sew this. You want to sew this side and then the bottom and then leave the top open so you can stuff it. Um, you can sew those or you can um, do hot glue. So to make it easy for you, I am going, and I know you guys can't see my head, but I want you to see this. So to make it easy for you, I'm going to do it with the, with the hot glue gun. Um, and so again, we're going to go along the side and the bottom and leave the top open so you can stuff it. So I'm just going to let you guys watch as I, as I get this done. Okay. Now that we have the two sides done, then we're going to flip it inside out. it inside out and you guys this glue gun got me and completely took the skin off of my finger when I used it last week so I'm respecting this <laughs> I'm respecting this glue gun this week so but we're turning it inside out and again pressing it down to make sure and like I said you can you can sew this you don't have to do it with the glue gun you can most definitely sew it um, but I want it to be easy for you guys, so we did the glue gun. So now the seams are done, and now I'm just going to fill it with my polyfill, and I'll let you guys watch me as I do that. Okay, so now here on the ends where it looks kind of square, you don't want to have a square pumpkin. If you were sewing it, then you would have gathered it like this and sewn it at the bottom and then flipped it inside out. 
but since I hot glued it, I didn't. So what I'm gonna do to make up for that is I'm going to take the glue gun and put some hot glue there. And then I'm just gonna fold this towards the center so that we have more of a rounded shape to our pumpkin. So let me do that real quick and then we'll pick up from there. Okay, now that I have this looking more rounded, you're gonna take your twine, you can use whatever you wanna use. I just decided to choose this um, brown yarn just because I like the colors together. And so we're going to move on to that step. Let me see if I can get this started. Close the beginning of the yarn. This is always not the fun part. Okay. So we have this, and you're going to take this. We're going to try and get this gathered as evenly so that it looks even from the all around. And this is centered. And then you're going to take your yarn, and you're going to tie a knot around it to hold it in place. See, I'm tying this. Okay. Cut off the excess. And then what you want to do is this piece here, you want to wrap your twine around it as tightly as possible until you have all of this filled with your twine. So let's do that. Okay, now that we have this part done, then we want to take some um, cotton twine, any kind you can find, and then some upholstery um, needles, just because you want it to be long enough to go. You can do it with a regular one, I'm sure, but I'm going to use my upholstery needle to do this part. So I'm just going to grab one, grab one of the shorter ones that I haven't used. I can get it out and then I'm going to thread my needle and then we're going to make the indentions for the pumpkin so hold tight let me thread my needle and I'll be right back so I have my needle thread and now I'm ready to make my indentions and you can kind of see here on the top of the pumpkin it's kind of giving you you know kind of a little bit of a pattern you can go by but what I'm gonna do is go in through the bottom and I'm gonna come out through the top right here Pull it through, make sure that's snug, and then I'm just going to go down, making the first one, and go through the bottom again, and then come back up, and when I pull it, I just want to make it snug so that it makes my little dimple. So I'm going to do that all the way around the pumpkin and let you watch while I'm doing that, and then I'll show you the finished product.
when you're all done, you have the cutest little blue boucle <laughs> pumpkin. Pretty easy. Okay guys, so the last project we're gonna do is this um, pumpkin sketch that I was inspired by that they had at Hobby Lobby. Um, and I really liked the one at Hobby Lobby, but, and I could have bought it, it wasn't really pricey. Some of you guys may already have it, um, but I knew I could do it myself and I wanted to. I have one that I freehanded and I'll insert a clip to let you see how the freehanded one went. And it's pretty good, it's freehanded, you can tell it is. Um, but for you guys, I wanted to do it, make it simple for you and let you um, see that I went and printed out a pumpkin um, just online and then cut it out. And then this way you can print out whatever. It may not be two pumpkins. or what, This one is inspired by being two pumpkins. Um, so we're going to do that. I've taped off my canvas so I can do my faux frame. And I'll show you how to do that. You're just going to put down some painter's tape to make it the width that you want your frame to be. And then you just take a pencil and go around and sketch um, the um, outer edge of that. So that's what we did. And then we're going to go back and um, remove the tape all the way up to the second piece where you have, you know, you want to, anyway. Hard to explain i'll show it to you <laughs> so but yeah so this is going to be the faux frame and then here's our pumpkins and so um i think that we are going to go ahead and do the pumpkins first and then we will do the faux frame so guys i'm just kind of positioning and eyeballing where i want my um, pumpkin to be and i think this one is good for here and then there'll be another one here um, this one could be the one that's up and then the other one is down, but I think I'm going to let this one be here. So I'm just going to put it down and then I'm just going to, I'm going to use a Sharpie to trace around it. You can use a pencil if you want to use a pencil, but I'm, I'm just going to use the Sharpie. So let's get this sketched out. Okay guys, so now we're just gonna go in and we're gonna start painting your faux frame. And I always recommend that you take whichever color, if you want your frame to be a dark frame, then start with your dark brown. And if you want it to be a light color, then you're gonna start with your light brown. So I'm gonna start with um, the darker brown and then I'll go in and we will fix it. So I'm just taking a sponge. You can do all brushes. I usually recommend you do a brush because it's those backward and forward strokes that we want, but I'm just gonna go in with this and I'm just gonna go back and forth. I'm not trying to paint it solid. I want those, I want you to see streaks in it that would look like natural wood. And I'm gonna do this all the way around. So I'm gonna let you watch while I do it. Okay, so guys, the next thing you want to make sure you do is get the edges of the frame as well. So you want it to look like a real frame when you're looking at it from all sides. So make sure you do the edges as well. Just making sure we get the edges. We have the uh, top part and we have the edges so now we're going to go back in and make this look like even more like um, a wood grain texture but we're almost there it's looking good so it already has the darker streaking in it and I really could leave it like this without adding the other um, layers to it because it streaked really good for me and I'm thinking that I really don't need to add the other steps. So I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna leave it at this. Typically I would go in with black just to 
streaks where we have these darker streakings. I would go in with black to make those and then light the color, but it did it on its own this time. So I'm really pleased with how it looks just like this. So I'm going to leave it at that. And the only other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this brush with a fine angled edge or just something really tiny. And I am going to dip in this black just a little bit in this black. And then I'm going to come back and dip in this brown because I don't want it to be stark black. I just want it to have a little color. And then I'm going to go here in the corners to make it look like the frame was put together at the angles. So I'm just going to lightly just go from here to the corner like that to make it look like. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but I'll I'll show it to you. So let me do my lines. And I don't want it to be too stark, so I'm going to come back and just dab on top of it just a little. So it doesn't look too put together. And I think I'm actually going to come back in with my brush and go over that so it's not so So you guys, I decided to just use a crayon instead because I just really don't want the stark lines of the Sharpie. I really want it to look more. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the edges and just kind of, let me see if I can turn this around. I'm just going to go around the edges and I'm just going to go inside like this to make it look sketched and I don't want it to be perfect at that perfect line so I'm gonna go outside of it just a little bit and I'm just gonna keep doing this all the way around and in some places I'm gonna go a little heavier and a little less uniform than I normally would. So, so let's get this all stitched in.